Hello everyone and welcome back. From the previous session itself, we have started the journey of learning how data transfer takes place between the memory and the 8085 microprocessor. In that session, we studied how the organization should be in order to facilitate data transfer. In this session, we are going to learn about reading from memory in 8085 microprocessor. That is, how the 8085 microprocessor is going to read a data from the memory. So without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the topics that we are going to cover in this session. At first, we are going to understand the complete organization of 8085 microprocessor and the memory. Let me notify you this, that the organization that we have studied so far is actually incomplete. In order to provide data transfer in true sense, we need to understand the complete organization of 8085 microprocessor and the memory. And we are going to do that in this session. Once we have done that, thereafter, we will learn reading from the memory. That is, how the 8085 microprocessor is going to read a data from the memory. So let's now complete the organization. Now, this is the organization which we have built so far. If you remember, in case of 8085 microprocessor, it has multiplexed address and data bus. Well, to be precise, the lower order address bus also works as the data bus. However, that's not the case for the memory. In case of memory, we have got separate address bus and a separate data bus. We also came to know in order to initiate the data transfer, the 8085 microprocessor will require the memory address register, which is going to provide the address of the memory location with which the 8085 microprocessor is going to communicate. That is, Either it will be writing some data onto that location or it can read some data from that location. Now, once it has read the data, that is, the data has been brought via the data bus and then transferred into the microprocessor, we assume that it is going to be stored within the accumulator register. And the reason for our assumption is we have seen in our previous examples that whenever we want to operate on some data, the microprocessor brings and puts it inside the accumulator register. Now, along with these two registers, the microprocessor is going to need the pins which are the higher order address bus, the early pin, and the multiplexed lower order address and data bus. However, these pins are not sufficient. The microprocessor is going to need some more pins in order to facilitate data transfer altogether. Now, let me show you which are the pins we will require further. Since we are talking about data transfer, basically we are talking about reading or writing the data. Therefore, we will need the pins 31 and 32, that is RD bar and WR bar. We already know these specifies reading or writing. Along with that, if you notice, the microprocessor is about to communicate with the memory. So, in order to distinguish whether it is a memory device or the I.O. device, we will also require the output pin number 34, that is I.O. slash M bar. So, let's have them in our block diagram. Now, you might be wondering why we are taking WR bar in order to facilitate memory read. Because that's the topic of today, right? Well, let me tell you why. If you remember, when we were studying about the pin number 34, that is I.O. slash M bar, I showed you this table. Now, if you focus on the upper part of the table, notice when IO slash M bar is zero, it indicates that the microprocessor is going to communicate with the memory because memory signal is active low. So, when this signal is zero, that means the microprocessor is communicating with the memory. Along with that, if WR bar is reset to zero and at the same time RD bar is set to one, this entire combination is going to mean that the microprocessor writes to the memory. On the other hand, if IO slash M bar is zero, that is, we are still communicating with the memory, also the WR bar is set to one, and at the same time RD bar is reset to zero, this means the microprocessor reads from the memory. Now, why it is like that? If you notice, both the pins WR bar and RD bar, these are active low pins. And we already know the microprocessor can either read from the memory or write to the memory, but it cannot perform both at the same time. And since both these pins are active low, so the microprocessor, when it decides to write to the memory, the RD bar signal should be inactive. 
and that's notified by setting it to 1. And at the same time, WR bar will also be reset to 0, indicating the microprocessor is interested in writing. But today's topic is reading from the memory. So naturally, we are interested in this combination, that is, MUP reads from memory. Now, since memory is involved, IO slash M bar should be 0. And since we will be reading, not writing, so WR bar will be set to 1. However, RD bar will have to be reset to 0. So clearly, in order to facilitate the data transfer, we need all these signals as well. So let's incorporate them in our block diagram. Now, just like the 8085 microprocessor, within the memory, it has to be indicated that where the memory read or memory write is going to be performed. And therefore, the memory is also going to have the signals RD bar and WR bar. Now, interestingly, these signals, when it comes to 8085 microprocessor, we call them control signals. Basically, these are the part of the control bus, which we can precisely call the control channel. On the other hand, these signals, when it comes to the memory, these are known as memory signals. Remember, these are memory signals, not control signals. Why? Because we are considering memory in here. These are control lines or control signals for 8085 microprocessor, not for the memory. Now we already have incorporated the important signals. Let's now complete the circuit. We are going to build the combinational circuit, so we are going to need two OR gates. Now in both the OR gates, IO slash M bar is going to be fed as one of the inputs. Now for this OR gate, the second input is going to be WR bar. And the output of this will be connected with the WR bar of the memory signal. Notice it's been connected with a bubble, indicating it's an active low signal. Now coming to the second OR gate, we will have the input from the control signal RD bar. And the output of this is going to be connected with the memory read signal, which is also active low. And that's the reason why it is connected with a bubble. Now we have the complete organization for data transfer. So that's all about the organization of 8085 microprocessor and the associated memory. Let's now focus on the reading from the memory part. Now we already have seen within the memory we got the data 10011010 in the memory location F820. Now since the microprocessor wants to communicate with this particular location, Therefore, the memory address register, remember, it's a register which is inaccessible to the programmer. It is going to provide the address of the location, which in turn was already placed within the higher order address bus, also in the lower order address bus. And since this channel is currently working as the lower order address bus, that's the reason why ALE is already activated. Now, in order to facilitate memory read, that is reading from the memory, we are going to require this particular combination. And this combination is known as memory read. Notice it has a bar on top of it. And the reason is this is active low as well. Now I believe you remember since the microprocessor has the multiplexed low order address and the data bus, in order to perform data transfer, the ALE has to be low, right? So when ALE is 0, instead of A7 to A0, D7 to D0 will be activated. So at first, we will have to inactive the ALE signal. Worry not, for the time being, the latch is going to be responsible for providing the lower order address bits to the address decoder. Now, once the multiplex data bus is free for data transfer, thereafter, we can generate the required control signals. Notice, we have got zeros in both IO slash M bar and RD bar. So let's have them at first. And at the same time, we need to set WR bar to 1. So let's have that as well. Let's now observe how the combinational circuit that we have built is going to react to this input sequence. Well, WR bar is 1 and IO slash M bar is providing 0 to both these input lines. Finally, RD bar is reset to 0. So through this input line of the second OR gate, we will also have 0. Now, in case of any OR gate, if one of the input is high, we will have the output as 1 as well. And on the other hand, if both the inputs of the OR gate is low, the output is also going to be low. 
now no worries since it is zero and it is being fed to the memory via a bubble which means this is a active low connection so this will be activated on the other hand since it is one and that two is being fed to the memory via a bubble therefore wr bar is going to be inactivated and this entire combination is known as memory read so the memory has been notified that the microprocessor is interested in reading not in writing and once this is done now the data is ready for transfer and how it will be transferred well from the memory location it will first be placed into the data channel of the memory thereafter it will be transferred to the multiplexed low order address and the data bus of the microprocessor and finally it is going to be placed in the accumulator register now notice the data it is 1001 and 1010 within the accumulator we are going to bring the hexadecimal value since we have been dealing in hexadecimal at this part so that's the reason why we are doing this so 1001 is actually 9 and 1010 which is 10 in decimal in hexadecimal is a so after the entire operation within the accumulator register we are going to have the data 9a remember the hexadecimal reference is purely for us for the computer it is always going to be binary so this is how reading from the memory takes place and all the steps which are involved in this process are known as the memory read sequence Now let me summarize what we have learned so far. At first, before the data transfer, the ALE should be one. That is, when the memory address register is providing the higher order address, also the lower order address via the entire address bus, the ALE has to be one, indicating this multiplexed lower order address and the data bus is carrying address for now. and due to this the address decoder is going to decode the address and select the memory location after that ale will have to be reset to zero this will indicate that the higher order address bus will remain as the address bus however in case of the multiplexed low order address and the data bus as you can notice since d7 till the pin d0 have been highlighted this entire thing is going to work as the data bus Now after ALE has been reset to 0 we have to activate the memory read signal which will be activated if it is 0 and for that we require the input sequence 100 in the respective pins wr bar io/m bar and rd bar of the control signals of 8085 microprocessor and only this sequence is going to activate the memory read signal which in turn is having rd bar as 0 and wr bar as 1 within the memory signals now once the memory has been notified that the memory read is about to be performed thereafter the data is transferred from the memory to the 8085 microprocessor remember it is done in three steps first the data from the memory location is placed onto the data channel of the memory Thereafter it is transferred to the low order address and the data bus which is multiplexed of the microprocessor and finally from there it is placed in the accumulator register Now from the moment when the memory read signal becomes active till the time when the data is completely transferred and has already been placed within the register of the 8085 microprocessor this duration is known as the memory access time In other words This is the time duration which is required for the microprocessor to access the memory location and bring the data within its register. So this is the entire memory read sequence which is necessary for reading from the memory. So in this session we cover the topics. First, we completed the entire organization of 8085 microprocessor and the memory specifically for data transfer. Thereafter we learned about how reading from the memory takes place all right people that will be all for this session in the next session we are going to learn how to write to the memory that is how the 8085 microprocessor is going to write some data on a particular memory location so i hope to see you in the next one thank you all for watching